Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman here doing the weekend update. It is July 30th, 2016. I'm going to start uh, on this weekend update with something a little bit unusual. I'm going to show you, well, something I was shocked at and maybe uh, you were as well, but let's go right to it. U.S. GDP comes out on Friday morning. They were looking for about 2.2%. Now, GDP is often revised, but in any way, shape, or form, no matter how you want to put this, GDP comes out at 1.2%. Now, granted, again, it can be revised moving forward. We've all seen revisions before. It's not how bad GDP happened to be. Additionally, you could probably point to, you know, S&P 500 Q3 2016 earning growth rate pretty much fallen out of bed over here. And again, this is just Q3, but there is an earnings recession ultimately underway there. It's, it's not that uh, at all. Really, what concerned me, and we'll come back over to this trade in a moment, but what concerns me the most is the lack of of reaction inside of the S&P 500. There was also at the same time as like GDP, there was also a durable goods number out there. It was horrific. I haven't seen that much bad data thrown at the market at one time. To compound it, you had ExxonMobil come out with earnings that ultimately, all right, they've been declining ExxonMobil, that is, for quarter after quarter after quarter. You're looking at almost 18 months okay, of decline out of ExxonMobil. Now, again, these are only a handful of circumstances, but GDP is fairly massive, and it's not often that you hear me discuss fundamentals. Okay, how often do traders say, oh, yeah, look at the fundamentals? It's the lack of the S&P 500 even reacting to it. In fact, when uh, when the GDP number, when the durable goods came out, the S&P has moved a whopping three handles on that information out there. And that is what is extremely disconcerting to me. Uh, again, not going to go too deep into the fundamentals. If you are curious, if you never looked at ExxonMobil over here, I happen to be short the the XLE. Nevertheless, here is uh, ExxonMobil. And yeah, there there has been some degree of impact over here. But again, this is a company that has been in decline for quite some time. You wouldn't know it by looking at a, uh, for instance, a uh, five-year chart over there. Okay. More appropriately, though, uh, just a year-to-date. Um, obviously, this is the end of uh, 2015. Coming into 2016, there's been nothing at upside uh, until ultimately the uh, the last three weeks of trade. Um, again, falling out of bed, but rallying back uh, yesterday quite substantially. Again, earnings, generally speaking, have not been that good. However, you could make an argument that Google okay, and their earnings are so good and the market cap of Google is so large that it actually offsets some of the negative implications of many of the other earnings out there. No matter who you are, because again, you can make arguments all day long on both sides of that equation. It's not going to get you anywhere. No matter who you are, though, I think you have to respect the fact that the, the markets, they just didn't move on what was horrific numbers. Even if you think horrific numbers is a good thing for markets, think about that for a second. Horrific numbers, GDP comes out, you know that the FOMC that had an announcement earlier this week, you know they saw those GDP numbers prior to it was taken into account. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, the numbers are so bad that they're going to have to come out with quantitative easing number 57 or whatever they want to call it. It's the twist. It's QE1, QE2, QE forever. Nevertheless, uh, again, quantitative easing in some way, shape or form, central bankers, they're here to stay. All right. And that's what you have to recognize. But uh, again, what is just utterly shocking to me, and I'm going to close up this left side bar over here, is the lack of conviction in the marketplace. And it's something that uh, this needs to go without saying over here. But if you look over to the right hand side of the screen, looking at what's termed expected moves 
Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the six day expectations of movement here and I'll just tighten up the number of strikes. What you're looking at right now is about a $23 expected move. Now, I've gotten a lot of emails in the past two weeks and these emails have really come in and around the idea. They said, Don, you're not selling premium. Listen, I made my career trading in and around selling premium and ultimately managing the risk behind that. Okay, I don't like to take monstrous directional positions, although I do have a fairly good directional position on right now. I, I you know, clearly state I am bearish on the overall market for a little bit more of a duration, not necessarily short term because the risk reward just isn't there for me to the upside. How much upside is there? Well, we're at all time highs versus the downside risks. Clearly, I think the downside risks outweigh the upside potential. Nevertheless, again, whatever my long term take is, don't let it necessarily influence you. What I don't like right now, I am not selling premium. Okay, because you're going to sell it into an oblivion. If you sell premium right now, you got to sell premium and you got to get long volatility or you're going to get crushed. Iron condors right now. Listen, again, I built my trading for the previous, you know, 15 years around the idea of selling far out of the money options and trying to manage the risk. And I'm telling you right now, you do it and you will be selling yourself into an oblivion. This six day volatility is showing a $23 expected move. Well, maybe we do move inside the $23. And that's basically saying like, hey, I think we're only going to move up 23 bucks or down 23 bucks. Maybe we do move inside of that range. I mean, come on. Over the last, what, three weeks of trade, we've seen nothing. We've seen absolutely nothing. Do you realize that in the last almost three weeks of trade, we haven't been outside of 2160, okay? We haven't even hit 2180. We've been inside this like 15 point range. Nevertheless, you're not going to get, you know, catch me selling short duration premium over here because when we do make that move, you're going to get run over. It doesn't matter if you make money three or four times. Options are not just about probability. They're about magnitude, right? What I'm saying is if you are going to sell premium in any way, shape or form, I don't care if you're 34 days out, the vol is only projecting a $65 expected move. And again, I almost say it sarcastically because we can't believe it. Now, I've seen volatility this low, but I haven't seen volatility this low with all of the headwinds out there with a 1.2% GDP with Japan stating they're openly buying their markets over there. It just goes on and on with a currency war underway with the fact that, yes, there is an election around the corner. Up, oh, don't worry. And statistically speaking, the most volatile month in markets is September, but it's okay because 62 days from now, we're still pricing inside of a hundred dollar move. So what I'm saying is if you're going to consider selling premium, you got to do it with a long volatility stance. What that ultimately means in this case, well here, I'm using a type of a diagonal. I happen to be selling. Okay the 9th of September expiration, 202.50 puts. Okay, so I am selling the 202 half puts. That's the 9th of September, and I'm buying the OCK 21s, and those are the 200 puts. So what this trade amounts to, it's a calendar spread with an embedded $2.50 okay, vertical spread. The trade's being done for a dollar seven debit. However, you still have an additional two dollars and fifty cents of risk in here. But there's also rolling opportunities. Now, this stuff's going to get a little bit complicated. But if you go out there and you just sell an iron condor, okay? Your iron condor is a sitting duck at this point. It's not going to play well with me, and I'm not going to play well with it. I got to make myself net long Vega. And what that means, and Vega is your sensitivity okay, to changes in implied volatility. And anything I do right now 
Okay, I'm actually going to be netting out my Vega. I want to be buying volatility, but at the same time, I want to go out there and I do, in fact, want to sell some premium. Now, when I start to, you know, tweak and play around with this strategy, you don't necessarily have to do a diagonal. For those of you that are more experienced, okay, you can start to tweak the strategy and you can come up with all kinds of fun ratios in here to where you can make yourself net long Vega and neutralize your theta. You're like, I have no clue what you're talking about. Basically, what I'm talking about here is I want to get long volatility, but not have to pay for time. All right, still taking some degree of risk, but I want to get long volatility without having to pay for time. This is the kind of stuff that I'm going to be talking about all this week here at Theo Trade. So uh, I set up with this a little bit last week. We've been talking just a bit about the Greeks, uh, but again, there is a huge opportunity right now that I believe exists in the marketplace. And the huge opportunity, get long vol, all right? In any way you want to put it. Hey, even if volatility doesn't come, let's say just done is wrong. Take that for example, all right? I don't mind saying it. Maybe I'm wrong. You're going to actually finance, okay, your long volatility by selling shorter duration options against it. So there'll still be risk in your trades out there. Nevertheless, again, getting long volatility is where my head is going to be focused over here. And in the very short, short duration, I'm even going to look at some long gamma trades. But actually, in the short duration, okay, very, very short duration, we're going to be getting long gamma. We're going to finance stuff by selling kind of mid-duration options. And then I'm going to be buying volatility further out in time. Don't let any of that complexity, the term vega or gamma, confuse you. This stuff is not that bad. Again, markets right now, they're shrugging off any and all news. Eventually, okay, we won't do that. And again, when you look at any underlying right now, and I, I usually use the SPX as kind of that, that full litmus test for the marketplace, but even when you start to look out, all right, to the end of November. Yeah, there's an election coming up. Yada, yada, yada. It doesn't really matter. But there's only a $167 expected move on a 16 vol over there. Okay, to me, that's a rage and buy. I think that uh, there's not going to be any volatility between now and the end of November. I would uh, strongly disagree. Nevertheless, whether you agree or disagree, Getting long volatility and financing by short duration options can be an extremely effective strategy when waiting for volatility ultimately to return. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at TheoTrade for the weekend update. Again, my name is Don Kaufman. All this week in the TheoTrade chat, I'm going to be talking about these types of strategies, getting long volatility and trying to find ways to finance it. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.